Hey guys, how's it going? Today's gonna be kind of an interesting video here, and that's because, well, I guess just to start by asking, have you ever wanted to see somebody struggle? Because uh, if so, you're probably gonna see that in this video. Uh, so I'm gonna be painting Neva uh, from Celestial Miniatures. Uh, Dimension Games does that. They did uh, Deep Madness, they're doing uh, Dawn of Madness here soon. Celestial will be its own Kickstarter here soon. It sounds really cool. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the gameplay details that I do know right now, but suffice it to say, fantastic kind of aesthetic design and miniature quality. These are the nice resin ones that you can get now. A link below to uh, the shop there, and then I'll also find a link to the my video where I unboxed almost all the ones they have on offer right now. Anyway, suffice it to say, I want to actually do this proper, so I'm gonna kind of pretend I'm putting it in competition. Obviously, I am not the competition level. I do not paint that good, so you can't expect that from me, and I've never based anything like this before, so expect me to struggle, but that being said, I'm just going to film me doing it, so the, I'm going to do it two parts. Second part's going to be actually painting her. First part's going to be uh, building and painting the base for her that, that she'll be on. It's kind of a, a scenic base. And uh, then I'll just add the voiceover on, like, uh, what I was thinking at the time, the struggles I had, what I edited out, what I didn't edit out. Uh, and, and this is beforehand. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm not expecting a smooth sailing approach to this. So, uh... Uh, come along with me on this journey. We'll see in these two videos uh, how it ends up. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that it ends up something that I'm really, really happy about that I can actually set out as kind of a set piece. I put a lot of thought into the base and hopefully that comes across without me explaining too much of it, but I guess we'll see. All right, let's, let's get to it. Wish me luck. Okay, so this is just not really anything put together. Um, I'm just trying to get a basic layout, kind of what I want it to look like. I'm also trying to make sure she's really secure to the base, so I want her to have a few connection points. That's just kind of what I'm looking at here. Nothing's glued on yet. Uh, the, the most I've done is actually that kind of back cliff wall. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I haven't glued it together, but I've cut the pieces out. I'm going to glue it now. And then I'm, I'm just trying to make it a little bit of an open space so you can kind of really see her. Um, so, some, some, while I glue this together, let me give you, I guess, the basic thoughts I had about the space. So, um, story-wise, she's kind of on the run. She's, you can think of her as kind of like a, a, a prophet, and she says some stuff that isn't politically convenient, um, for the other Celestials, and, uh, or, 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 you know, whatever, and so, um, she's essentially, like, kicked out or whatever, and then she's got her own, like, following and of people who, who believe in her and that kind of stuff. A very cool story that I'm not doing justice at all, um, but, um, Byron over there at, uh, Dimension Games is, uh, you know, doing a lot of the story stuff there, and it just, it all sounds really cool and enthralling and awesome, and I would love to just hear more and more about it. However, I wanted her, if, because she looks kind of worried, uh, she has a fantas fantastic facial sculpt, by the way. The best face I've ever seen in any mini. Uh, just the emotion in there that it, it, it evokes is, is really, really inspiring. And so I wanted her to feel like she's out of place, like like it's not where she belongs. And so she's kind of like this Naga mermaid sort of looking thing, right? Um, and so I figured why not, instead of like, there's no water, it's just like a muddy forest with a cliff wall. Her back is literally up against a wall. Um, I, I, I felt that kind of signified uh, quite a bit of her predicament. I didn't want to build the uh, cliff too high though, uh, because she has some cool stuff in the back of her hair, and I wanted you to still be able to see pretty much all of her. And so building about halfway up allows you to get the presentation that she's kind of backed up against the wall um, while still being able to see the whole miniature. Now, this is multiple layers of corkboard. I, what I did is I just kind of drew a shape on the corkboard and then I cut it out, and then I used that to, as a template for the others. So obviously it's not perfect, especially with the corkboard, and what I don't want it to see is lines everywhere. And so I'm taking the, um, my, uh, you know, razor blade here and just trying to, as best as I can, um, make it to where it's not obvious where the lines are. So uh, scooping out pieces, making sure there's not a flat line really anywhere here, and just more or less blending them together. Um, this was actually quite a bit of time, and my first thought was that this would be enough, that I would just do this and I'd be done, um, and it's not. I'm going to end up... I, I, I'm glad that I do what I do later, uh, because I think it really makes it look great. Um, and, and really sells what I was going for there, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. But I, I was thinking that the cork would give me the texture of kind of rubble and, you know, uh, this kind of sheer cliff wall um, that I wanted. 
uh, without uh, it, it, without anything else, right? I'd just be able to put paint on, prime it, and put paint on it, and then be done. Um, so, I, and I did wait, uh, by the way, about a day for this just to glue. Um, j just be, I mean, it wasn't like 24 hours, it was like the next day. So I did this kind of in the afternoon and then, uh, a little, maybe a little bit early in the afternoon, I, I, uh, went and kind of started doing this, uh, because you want it <laughs> really, really dry there, uh, with that PVA glue. So it's not going to fall apart as you're, you know, doing this because yeah, I mean, cutting cork and not having it just chip away is actually kind of difficult. You need a pretty sharp, I actually put a new razor blade on there. Uh, just for this and I I probably ruined it now, so I need another one uh, Yeah, I mean this took forever um, But it is pretty much the most prominent feature of the base, right? It's definitely the biggest thing and so if it doesn't look good, then it's it's kind of a bummer um, So I wanted to make sure that it it looked decent because again I, I I'm not basing this to play in the game obviously because it's a huge base I want this to kind of be on display kind of like my demon vanguard I did so after all of that, I wanted to pretty much seal it in glue, almost like using Mod Podge. And actually, this was twofold. First of all, I felt it would make it more structurally sound, especially the ends, the bottom and top. Um, even after drying, started to kind of peel away a little bit. Um, but it, it should also slightly fill in kind of any gaps or anything like that. It just makes it a little bit more smooth. Um, uh, transitions between everything which again hopefully makes it where you can't see the layers as well so again I thought this was the last step and I, again I had to wait a day for this to dry um, but I ended up having to do more anyway but at least this went really quick and it does make it I mean like after this because the cork board will actually kind of soak a lot of this in um, I didn't water down the glue or anything like that, but it, it still seemed to kind of, it, it just gives it a little bit of, ri you know, it's more rigid, right? I mean, you can, you can kind of smack it on a table a little bit and it makes a, a satisfying thunk sound as opposed to a spongy cork board hitting table sound. Uh, I don't know what you just imagined that sound was because I don't know what it'd be either. All right, so I went and bought this drill. Um, so it, again, I'm, I'm trying to do things proper here. So I want to pin things onto the base. So I, I found one that's, you know, fits the, the paperclip thing. Uh, as far as this drill's concerned, it's okay. If you're doing it in something like wood that you'll see me do or put it sufficiently deep, it, it, it's, it's the kind that just clamps through pressure. And so if there's an, too much pressure on what it, your, the drill bit, um, that you're drilling into versus, uh, what it's putting on it'll just slide out right and you'll have the drill bit stuck in whatever material you did which is kind of a bummer I wish it really kind of locked in some other way but uh, so yeah this is just me cutting the paper clip with some cheapo wire cutters that I have and then just trying to kind of figure out where it's going to be on the uh, uh, the wood here so it what I did is I put on the cork board and then lightly pressed on the uh, press it uh, not down all the way but uh, down enough to make the marks on the wood so I knew exactly where it lined up because uh, you, you if they don't line up it's not gonna work and then of course I'm gonna glue right into the hole and then all around uh, kind of every, you know the, the whole area it looks kind of like a mask by the way I guess and uh, so yeah it, it's actually pretty easy the hardest parts I guess lining it up here um, I, I, if you didn't have wood that was malleable like if you're pinning a uh, miniature which let me know if you want me to do a a video about uh, kind of miniature repair and pinning and stuff like that but you can actually use like the blue blue tack like the poster putty kind of stuff and uh, put it on the connection bit and then push you know have the uh, paper clip sticking out and that'll mark in the uh, the blue tack where you yeah, see so right here it's it's hard to it's just spinning right it's really hard to get that to come out but I finally got it out um, It'll mark in the blue tack and you drill through the blue tack and you'll get that alignment right. Because uh, if it's a bad angle, your arm's going to be all weird or anything like that. Uh, I am scuffing up the bottom. These are real... I'll, I'll link to these. These are really cool, um, uh, a little bit larger scale tree trunks, but they were perfect for this. And so I bought them out because I liked that they were that they had some roots showing, that they're all sawed off. Because again, I didn't want her blocked too much and that they have... Some of them have mushrooms on them, which... Uh, it allows me to introduce a bit more color. I am scoring the underside. You're essentially just doing uh, uh, like hash marks, and that'll allow the super glue to kind of stick better. Um, so again, just kind of placing her there. You'll notice I cut a new shape uh, on the bottom there. I wanted it to look a, a little bit more wholesome instead of just using some scrap bits I had. Uh, again, just trying to do it right, but uh, adding that little bit where that tree is there just makes it not a flat field, 
right? There's a little bit of a hill over on the side um, that I'll blend in with, with some mud and whatnot. Uh, just uh, kind of uh, changing the, the the height so it's not like <laughs> uh, like she's in some field. It's supposed to be a kind of a natural forest setting. So uh, just gluing these on and making sure that, you know, it, 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 again, I, I aligned everything kind of in the beginning and then I'm aligning everything again before I really glue it on because once it's glued on, it's a little bit more permanent. Um, with wood like this, you could actually get it off, but you damage the wood, which would be unfortunate. So I'm trying to be pretty exact here if, if I can help it. Alright, so we're now we're getting the last little bit on here and then everything will be pinned and glued down which is, means we can actually start priming it, painting it, tech, putting texture on it and finalizing this whole thing uh, which is pretty exciting. Alright, so as you can see, I did prime it all in black, and then I got this Vallejo Earth Texture. What's great about this stuff is it's pretty much meant for dioramas. You get like 200 milliliters for like 12 bucks on Amazon. Again, I'm going to link everything I'm, I'm using in the description below, uh, so you can, you know, grab what I, I am using if you like kind of what you're seeing here. Um, but it, it's a great price for that. I mean, I think a Citadel Texture Pod is like, it's definitely not 200 milliliters. I, I don't know how much it is. Well, actually, it's, uh... What do we got here? It is 0.8 fluid ounces, 24 milliliters, and that's like nine bucks. So 12 bucks for 200. Yeah, that's a no brainer. As you can see, I'm brushing it all over this. Um, if you if you if you do a very thin coat of the earth, it just kind of you just get that gritty texture to it, um, which is perfect for a rock face anyway. Um, and so it's still going to keep the basic shape with all the outcroppings and everything, but it'll do just enough to kind of fill in any lines that you might still see. It's a good base coat. It's covering completely, whereas as you can see, the primer didn't get all in everywhere. And uh, I, th I think it looked really, really good. I was also able to add a little bit of texture on the top. I dislike really anything that's super flat. And so I actually gave it a little bit of some clumps to kind of uh, really get a dry brush to pop out. It, it, looks looks really sweet when I'm done with it uh, and, and actually I'm gonna leave this as a base texture I got that that's why I got the dark earth version um, it's kind of a, a very light brown gray uh, that uh, looks great after a, a wash uh, so I'm gonna do some known oil on it that'll both you know pop out the texture a bit but then also um, just kind of you know to shift the the tone of the the color a little bit uh, to a little bit more gray a little bit less brown so again, just kind of, um, b before I put the mud on here, I want to actually, I'm not going to pin her where I'm going to glue it, but I am going to drill a little hole in the bottom and, and, uh, have a little paper clip in there and then press down again, just so I can see exactly where she's going to be. Now, the hard part here is how her tail is bent, I, because I want the front, you know, the, where you're looking back into the cliff, be more or less the front of her, but she's kind of turned, but I, you need to see that facial expression. If she's turned to the side and you're only seeing a profile of her, that would be unfortunate. I want you to see kind of that worry in her eye that she has. So here you go, I've, I've now uh, marked the location so I know where not to put mud exactly, but I'm gonna put mud as close as I can to there. As you can see here, I have mud and grass, and then European mud. They're slightly different colors, so I blend them a little bit. Um, but really, I wanted some that had grass on it, and then some that had just the European mud on it. Um, I will say that I don't think I'm quite done with this base yet. I'm done with the part one, because I'm gonna wait until she's painted and see the final thing before I add anything else to the base, but I might actually place some static grass. I might actually place a little bit of, you know, kind of grass tufts. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I wanna see the whole thing before I, I, I commit to any of that, so I'm certainly not gonna glue any of that stuff on, but I do wanna get the texture and everything else on there, and so we're 90% done by the end of this, but this grass tech in the mud is really, really cool. I mean, it looks awesome. It just looks like it's been 
churned and super wet and it looks like like a mudslide went through here uh and just tore up the grass and all that it's it's great i really really am happy with that and then the european mud is like clumpy like like na like it's nasty mud like this this is mud that you would see on like like soldier boots that's how i envision it anyway uh just this clumpy clustered thick mud um, all of it's really thick mud, and uh, I'm using this tool pretty much exclusively to uh, just kind of blend it out. So again, that hill, I don't want it to be you know super sheer, so I'm kind of blending it a little bit and filling in a little bit of that gap in between the cliff here. I, I want the grass to be essentially in a single spot, as in I don't want a spot randomly on the other side, um, but I don't want it just half and half either. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of having it more or less be on this side of the the tree here and then I'll leave a little bit where it's not. These pots were great by the way, they were only like five bucks. So again, like well, five and some change, I guess six bucks or whatever. But yeah, I mean prime shipping, six bucks for some highly technical specific detail uh, texture and even then there's there's a lot in that. Well, how much is in these? Let's see, this is uh, uh, 40 milliliters. So 40 milliliters for six bucks, sold. That's uh. You know, already over over double a citadel pot of texture paint, and it, it's it's the same kind of thing. This is just acrylic, um, you know, thickened with texture and whatnot uh, paint. Uh, so it, it it is pretty much the exact same thing. As you see, I'm getting really close there, and in fact, I end up putting a little bit more, even a little bit closer, because I'm gonna put her back on just to make sure that there's not any black showing up. When I actually paint her at the very end, I'm gonna put more mud on her. There's, it's it's not a pet peeve. I wouldn't say it's a pet peeve because I, I don't, I notice it every time it happens. So a lot of people will do a base like this. Um, oh, no, so not like this, but they'll do a base and then they'll put the miniature on it and they'll be painted separately. And all this texture of that this miniature has supposedly walked on, it's not on the mini at all. It's like completely separate. Uh, when I did the near Ona, uh, snake kind of lady chick uh, from Rising Sun. She was on a mud base and I made sure to put mud on her because she obviously was slithering in the mud. Um, if you don't, it just looks like your miniature is like... It, it, it doesn't mesh, right? Uh, even if you don't pinpoint why it looks that way, it, it just looks off. Right? It kind of breaks the immersion there. Uh, and so she will have some mud on her. She's not going to be perfectly clean here. She's She's on the run. She's not where she's used to be. I mean, this is not her natural habitat, right? This is going to be something kind of kind of bad. I guess I didn't explain with the mushrooms and the crystals. I want it kind of like a mystical forest a little bit, not just a, you know, not just a forest, but a mystical forest. Let's you know, add a little bit of excitement there, a little bit of alienness or otherworldliness or whatever. I don't want her to seem like she's just like, you know, in the woods in Mississippi here or something like that. Um, so again, this is just known oil. One of the, again, one of the reasons I do like pots for washes is I can stick this entire brush in there and really quickly get out. I don't have to like pour it on a palette or do anything like that with a water uh, bottle. I actually, actually like the pots for washes because of this reason exactly. I can just get it done quick and uh, it, as you can see, it pops out all that texture and it lists. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out because <laughs> I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get it. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it turned out great. Again, with the wash, um, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry before I can dry brush. That being said, it wasn't a day. I just like, uh, went and, you know, saw my family for a little bit, I guess, and then came back to it. <laughs> All right, so now we're actually gonna be painting the trees and then the crystals and do the dry brush and then we're pretty much done. Um, so this is Flat Earth from Vallejo here that I chose. Uh, again, it's a good base color um, because it can lighten up really well and uh, it can darken really well. So I'm gonna you know throw a wash on here later and then, and then dry brush it even later after that. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of debated on whether I wanted really dead trees, like if I wanted very pale looking gray trees or even like a light tan um, or if I wanted like a really hardy like kind of a dark brown oak kind of tree and I decided to go somewhere in the middle um, so you could yeah it's up to interpretation how long they've been cut how long they've been dead uh, here and, and it's not my intention to be like oh this is a logging and they've been cutting these trees again I just didn't want the trees covering her up so I just have stumps instead um, 
it, it's kind of like how the cliff is kind of cut off. Um, I, I imagine these are just kind of cut off too for, um, you know, just practicality's sake more than a specific uh, design choice. Now, obviously painting with the texture on, if I were to do this again, I'd probably paint these first and then do, add the mud on top of it, just because I had to be more careful. It took, it took more time, uh, you, you know, because you, <laughs> I, I don't want to get uh, paint on the mud. If I had gotten paint on the mud, I would have just covered it up with more mud. Um, I wouldn't have tried to paint the mud or, or even really clean it up. I would have just smacked some more mud on it. It's mud. And so with mud, it can be kind of chaotic. Can I have a pile of mud there? Sure, why not? You know, maybe there's something underneath the mud. You don't know. What's underneath the mud is like a blotch of flat earth flay hill paint. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the only reason everybody, anybody would know that if I did it is because I, I record myself doing uh, dumb things sometimes. But yeah, so just being careful here. Uh, again, hindsight 2020, I would have painted this beforehand, but I didn't. So <laughs> this is what this is what you're seeing. Getting in between the... Uh, the crystals, by the way, are kind of rough. And the fact that I don't mess with the crystals until after, you know, I paint these. It also would have been better to paint these and then add the crystals afterwards. Um, but, you know, I, nothing was committed on this until I finally glued it on. Um, so how those, you know, that big clump of uh, crystals there are, are the way they are, that wasn't committed until I was deciding, okay, yeah, that's where they're going and glued it on there. Um, so... Uh, you would have to be an even better planner than I am, I feel, <laughs> to to commit to, you know, oh, I want to paint this and then add this later and, and whatnot. I, I had to kind of get some of it together to really uh, comprehend exactly what this was going to look like. I believe I've seen other uh, uh, miniature YouTube channels that actually do like terrain and stuff like this uh, more than me, considering this is my first time doing anything like this at all. Um, actually like draw out plans and I, I mean uh, borderline measurements and stuff none of that happened here this was just me conceptualizing uh, kind of the mood I wanted to get off and the kind of message I wanted to get v through visual storytelling in the scene uh, to the best of my abilities anyway which that was kind of fun is really just I guess pushing your um, abilities and uh, really trying new things and really trying to do your best here. Um, obviously, there's there's a time thing here, right? I didn't spend, you know, 20 hours doing this. This is not a crystal brush entry. This is not, you know, when, when I highlight the, the gems, um, I do a little bit by hand, but then other times I'm just essentially dry brushing, um, which, you know, obviously isn't a exact science. <laughs> but for, for what I was going for and what I wanted, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Alright, so now we got the dry brush out. Well, this is this is really just a brush and I just smashed it to where it's kind of out and I'm very lightly putting on some uniform gray on here. I'm actually going to do a another coat of ash gray here soon, but uh, it, this, this this gray highlight again is going to make the recesses look more gray again. I'm pretty much getting rid of most of the brown that was in there out to where it looks more like a stone and less like earth, if that makes sense. So here's the ash gray, um, again, even lighter of a dry brush here. So I'm just getting the tips here. So there, you will still see that uniform gray. It's not a complete covering. Normally I don't do that. I just do one and call it good. But again, I'm trying to really do this miniature justice. It's a beautiful miniature, uh, an amazing quality miniature, the detail, the sculpt design, everything about it's so awesome. I'm really happy with it. And I want to make sure that I do as good as I can for it. All right, so this is fun. I picked Crystal Blue, A, because it's called Crystal Blue, how could you not? And then B, because it actually is a really good, I think, base color. I don't want any of this to look dark. I don't think any of these gems are super thick. And so it's going to be bright and then brighter. Um, also, I want to do an OSL on here, uh, which I, I, again, I wasn't committed until I finally decided to get up the courage to do it because I was super nervous about messing it up um, because it'd be really unfortunate. 
at the very end to stats Moso and ruin ruin that whole part of it. Um, but so I wanted them to almost be like they're glowing. I mean, they they're, they're going to be pretty bright. They're not uh, they're not just your your standard crystal. You're, they're your your non-standard forest blue glowing crystals. Again, though, because these are being painted right next to the tree stumps and they go right up to the stumps, super detail work here, being very careful. Um, luckily, I've had a bit of practice at this point with uh, painting like <laughs> in between stuff like that, but it's 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 kind of difficult. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, you definitely have to have... It's not just good, good brush control. I mean, it is. You can't be too shaky and all that kind of stuff, but um, obviously you can't have stray bristle hairs um, your paint can't be too thin. If it's too thin, it's just going to pool and mess up. And you can't have too much on your brush or it thickens the brush. And so you could get that glob, especially, um, a little bit, uh, up from the, uh, from the, uh, tip of the bristles. And so you don't want that either. So it just, you know, you just have to take your time or be smarter than me and paint these separate, which is what I wish I'd done, but I did. All right, so now I'm actually going to take a little break from that because that took quite a bit of time. You saw it very much uh, sped up here, put in some Agarek Thirst Shade to pop out all that texture on these uh, wonderful tree sculpts that I have, which I have more of these now and I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. Uh, I'm going to have to look at maybe some of the other other Celestial miniatures. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, they, they are really nice. Now again, I gotta be careful, not so much on the mud, I, I don't think it'd be too terrible if there was a little bit of a splotch, because as long as you just spread it real quick, I mean, you don't want it to line every tree, that'd be kind of silly, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. However, it would be really bad to get some Agarac Thirst Shade on these bright blue crystals. So, um, again, probably could have done this before doing the uh, uh, blue crystals, but I had to be careful anyway, and just wasn't being super smart about the order of paint I do, which I always try to... Um, normally do better. I didn't actually plan, I, like I, I had an idea of what the plants were, but again, like the trees I just kind of made up afterwards. How gray I went on the rock, cliff, just again, I kind of winged. I didn't actually plan this one like I normally do. It's probably pretty obvious. So at this point, the only thing I haven't done is I haven't painted the mushrooms and I haven't highlighted up the crystals and done the OSL, but that's all there is left to do. Oh, and uh, uh, do a, a quick kind of dry brush on these trees, which I'll do shortly. Alright, so again, flip-flopping back and forth. Uh, I don't know if this is just what motivated me. I just had an urge to... to <laughs> move back to something else after done with something. Uh, obviously I can't, I, I guess, anything else that I paint that I need to paint right now would involve the tree. It's either painting those mushrooms on the tree or dry brushing the tree and that wash needs to dry. So highlighting this will take plenty of time. So uh, this is me using uh, Lothurn Blue from Citadel. It's a very, very bright blue. It's a really fun blue. I, I, it's, it's, I've used it many times on many different things, a lot of it being highlighting. It's really, really good. So there's a straight Lothurn blue from the from the pot, and uh, I'm pretty much doing a, a edge highlight so I can bring out the um, the shape of the gem, and then a specific highlighting where the light is entering on two of the angles uh, at the top, and I'm trying to make sure that all lines up fairly well. Then uh, the only other thing I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of. Uh, uh, I don't want to say texture marks, uh, a little bit of slashes towards the top on the flat part of the gems, um, essentially giving the illusion that it, it gets darker as it goes lower as that's the light. Kind of like if, if you ever see like a, um, like if you were to shine a bright light on like a Coca-Cola bottle or something like that, the top of it where the light's entering would be fairly bright, almost see-through, and it would get darker and darker, or like a, a lake or uh, something like that. It gets darker the farther down it goes as less light can reach down it. Same kind of concept here, I'm assuming. I've never been great at knowing how light works. 
Um, you'd think, considering I'm not blind and I, I live in the world, I would understand it more, but artistically how it works I on different things. I, I just try to do a general approach, uh, a, a layman's approach, an average person's approach, perhaps. Um, just trying to make the gems look like uh, they actually have substance. Uh, and, and no washes on the gems. Uh, so that was something I had planned on doing, but I think the highlight worked enough to separate them. Like these big bunches here, I was worried it would just look like a blob, um, but that's not the case. It ends up really well. So now I have added white to the Lothurn blue. This is very bright. It's not quite white, but it's a very white blue um, or a very blue white, uh, I guess almost at this point. Um, again, I didn't want to go pure white. I think they would look too cartoony, and I'm definitely not going for cartoony with this. I'm going for a uh, slight realism here. I know I'm painting magical uh, glowing crystals on uh, you know, a magic tree, uh, but realistic in the sense that it's not, not painted in a, kind of a, a cartoon style. But these will give you some really good slashes here. Uh, you might notice I'm using a different brush, by the way. So I did end up buying a Raphael number zero after I heard uh, Maniac talk praises about it. I was like, well, fine, I'll, I'll buy one. And I did, and as you can see, it splits. Like, every brush I've ever gotten that was expensive. But my Winter Newton split. Um, this is my first time using it. And as you can see, it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to split into two. It worked well for me here. Uh, because I'm trying to add these little slashes anyway, and that just adds two little slashes, one thicker than the other, which is kind of random anyway. So it worked for what I was doing, but uh, don't know if it's worth the money, if, if, if you know what I'm saying here. Uh, it, it comes to a nice tip, it just doesn't keep the tip for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm buying them online here, and I, I need to uh, look for a, a art store that sells them that I can, I can look at. Maybe that's my problem, I don't know. All right, so this is Jungle Green uh, from Army Painter. This is my brightest green. It's even a little bit brighter than uh, Moot Green, but it's not like yellow either. I have some yellow greens that I didn't necessarily want to do. Um, this is about as yellow as I want these green to be. I'm not doing an OSL effect on here. I'm not making them glowing, but I'm making them super bright, uh, almost as if they're um, they're just not a mushroom that you're expecting to see. Also, the bright green splotches with the blue crystal just add that little bit of color pop. Um, because I haven't planned Nua out yet, I don't know exactly how I'm going to paint her, but I will probably try to match the art. Um, and so there is some beautiful art of her uh, that I'll probably try to be matching. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty standard in its paint and there's nothing crazy going on there, which I'm, I'm not saying that is a bad thing. Um, but I think to add a little bit of, of digital diversity and just make it seem a little bit more alien and magical, these, these kind of bright colors are really cool. Alright, so this is that flat earth with a little bit of white added into it, and I'm just doing a dry brush here. Again, I like the cliff, one dry brush, instantly uh, highlight a little bit, just to kind of pop out those details slightly. With again, not making it seem like there's too much color variation between the crevices of the bark in the bark itself. Uh, these are just one color trees, not two. All right, we are on the home stretch. We are almost done. This is the blue wash from Citadel uh, Drakenhof Nightshade, I believe it's called. And uh, I, again, I'm just kind of feathering it out and having it cast onto the tree and then out onto the mud um, as best as I can. I've never been fantastic at object source lighting. I think part of it's because I have no idea how lighting works apparently, um, but also just even if I can visualize it doesn't mean I can implement it super well. Uh, but but this works out well because it's, I'm not just doing the wash, that's too dark, right? <clears throat> what, this, what this wash is doing, what I'm using this for, is just to kind of tint the mud a blue color, but it's not really light. So the light will come from a dry brush of that Lotharn blue. Um, in fact, it's the, the bright Lotharn blue as well. So I just do regular Lotharn blue, and then I'm going to do the kind of mix with the white Lotharn blue. And again, a light dry brush. I, I just kind of want it to, to cast a general glow versus a I'm casting light directly on it like a flashlight, right? It's more like a lamp, less like a flashlight. My goal, you could, you know, do whatever you want. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's actually following this. Uh, in fact, let me know why you're watching this. I would love to just know, because I have many more celestial miniatures, and I could paint them, and I could do this for them, but I don't know if you're interested. Speaking of doing this, here it is. I did it. It's done. 
finally finished it. Um, this was quite the undertaking for me. Obviously, this is a lot more than just a board game miniature. This is, I mean, the fact that I have a 30 minute video just on the base shows how much kind of work uh, I tried to put into this. But I think layout wise, design wise, I, I'm really happy with how it came out. It came out how I imagined it, which I was worried it wouldn't. So that was kind of tough. Um, yeah, let me know if I did a good job. Let me know if I did something wrong or you think could think of something to do better or maybe you've tried something like this before and uh, you kind of have a, a, a story or a lesson to share with that. Either way, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Um, if, if you'd like any of the things you saw here, if you're like, oh, wow, that's really cool, link in the description below to, you know, the celestial miniatures and the, the tree trunks and the crystals and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, the, the plinth that I got here, this is actually from Hobby Lobby. This is a little wooden thing that they sell. Uh, it was like less than a buck, super cheap. So that was kind of nice too. And as you can see, her placement, uh, I, I, it's pretty final. I think that's about how I'm going to have it. So part two will be painting her. Um, and obviously that'll be a much more traditional painting guide tutorial where I list the paints and what I'm doing uh, to paint her like the concept art. But uh, super excited to get to that. So I'm going to get into that real soon. So keep on lookout for that. If you are not subscribed and you want to be notified of that or my other miniature painting videos or my board game miniature discussion videos or my unboxings or Kickstarter news or anything like that, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified. Check out Patreon if you want to give back and maybe get some rewards in return for that. I do give out miniatures. And if nothing else, thanks for watching.